Good morning. Our ancient antiphon, I spoke, O Lord, of your decrees before kings and was not confounded. I pondered your commands and loved them greatly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. As we gather today on this feast of the Passion of St. John the Baptist, we call to mind the Lord's presence with us, and we seek to deepen our understanding and awareness of the Lord's love and mercy in our lives. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us all our sins, Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and your blood, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who will that St. John the Baptist should go ahead of your son, both in his birth and in his death, grant that as he died a martyr for truth and justice, we too may fight hard for the confession of what you teach. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something so that no human being might boast before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that, as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down, he sees all mankind. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. But see, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to to deliver them from death, and preserve them in spite of famine. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. For in him our hearts rejoice. In his holy name we trust. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Please stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Herod was the one who had John the Baptist arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. She had an opportunity one day when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. Herodias' own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guests. The king said to the girl, Ask of me whatever you wish, and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask me, even to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request. 
I want you to give me at once on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests, he did not wish to break his word to her. So he promptly dispatched an executioner with orders to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in the prison. He brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl, in turn, gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Quite a way to start off a Saturday morning, right, with that story. So as we, uh, as we, as we remember and celebrate, honor this feast today of, of St. John the Baptist, the passion of St. John the Baptist, um, there is a good kind of, I think, simple reminder for us um, that, that is helpful as we, um, um, as, we, as we encounter this feast today, um, and that is to, to kind of take a step back and look at, at John the Baptist, who he was, and, and then more importantly, what he was about, right? Um, that he, he was the precursor of Jesus in birth and in death. His whole life was about pointing out and being focused on uh, uh, Jesus and helping people to prepare for his coming into the world and, and for, uh, for people to prepare their hearts for what this was going to mean that the Messiah was going to live among them and, and God's, God was going to be in the flesh um, and in, in their lives. Uh, as we know from the stories we hear, it was very difficult for many people to accept this truth, but John never gave up. Um, and, and even in the face of great adversity, uh, even to martyrdom, he was willing to keep his focus on Christ and keep helping, uh, keep doing what he could to help others to prepare to allow Jesus into their lives and into their hearts, which is where we come in, right? So it's that opportunity for us kind of on a twofold level. One is to, to be sure that we are continuing to open our hearts to Jesus being with us, Jesus coming to us in the different ways that he does, uh, especially here in the Eucharist and in the form of his body and, and, and blood, but also in the form of his word. But also for us to, to think about how we can imitate John's focus on Christ and continue to, to give ourselves over to that, to continue to keep our, our aim on him so that what we do, who we are, is all about sharing the good news that the Lord has given to us and living in his ways. Um, nothing new, but a great reminder and a good opportunity for us to, to bring this to prayer and to ask the Lord to bless us as we do what we can and do our best uh, to follow him, his ways and to keep our focus on him. So as we continue our prayer this morning and approach the table, we know we get the gift of the Lord once again an opportunity for us to focus on him, to open our hearts uh, to him, even as we receive his body and blood, and ask the Lord to help us as we go forth from here uh, to bring that gift to the people we meet. And let's stand and we'll offer our prayers this morning. We pray for missionaries throughout the world. May they receive God's blessing and comfort as they make his love known. Let us pray to the Lord. For policymakers, may God grant them wisdom in decision making. Let us pray to the Lord. For any married couples who are struggling, may God's grace grant them courage and forgiveness and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. For members of our faith community, may the Holy Spirit guide us in all aspects of our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, may they forever rejoice in the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Remember today, uh, Dave Tobin, who uh, is preparing to be ordained a deacon this morning. For him and for his classmates, and that the Lord may bless, bless them in their service and ministry among us. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all those uh, intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts this morning, especially for Chuck Aranda, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. God of grace and peace, we come before you with, with thanks. We ask that you hear the prayers of your people, even as we gather here. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through these offerings which we bring which we bring you, O Lord, grant that we may make straight your paths, as taught by that voice crying in the desert, St. John the Baptist, who powerfully sealed his teaching by the shedding of his blood through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing, even in the womb he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption. And to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim for death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We have one Eucharistic minister, please.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, as we celebrate the heavenly birth of St. John the Baptist, that we may revere, for what it signifies, the saving sacrament we have received, and even more may rejoice as its clear effects in us, at its clear effects in us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a, a great day ahead. Um, thanks for your understanding about no confessions this morning. Um, i got to get on the road to be at the cathedral for, for Dave's ordination. So have a good day and say a prayer for him and for his classmates. The Lord be with you. And may God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.